Hey y'all, I wanna give some advice to anyone who's struggling with some of the stuff that we struggled with when my son was dealing with some severe eczema and some other issues. But before I do that, I wanna share a little bit about his journey and some lessons we learned along the way. There was a lot and I don't wanna overwhelm anybody. So if you need to just skip to the end, you're more than welcome. And let me just preface by saying I'm not a doctor. I cannot treat or heal anyone, um, but I can share my experiences and the tools that we found that worked and the lessons that we learned along the way. So keep watching if, if this is something that interests you. My son Sage is one of the most exciting things that's ever happened in my life. He was an unexpected blessing in the most perfect time. And God is a funny God. I believe he, uh, he believes in irony, right? So I wrote a book about, I was writing a book about my, my journey through mental health and through some of the struggles that I had experienced. And the whole philosophy behind the book was that I had to go through storms so that I could receive rainbows. And after I published it, God was like, that's not really the message that I was trying to teach to you all these years. There was a couple other things that I felt God said, which was number one, I wasn't done writing your story. Because right after I published that book, Sage came into my world and just everything changed. But he also brought this piece of clarity, which was you have to persevere through the storm so that you can revel in the rainbow. And along that storm, you're picking up tools and lessons so that you can equip and encourage other people. And that's how I built my ministry. That's what I built my ministry around is like, God healed my mind. But it wasn't like, that wasn't the end. It wasn't like you've been healed, period. It was like, you've been healed, semicolon, now go help other people find their healing. So like I said, I'm, I'm not a healer, I'm not a doctor, but I've learned some really cool lessons and it would be great if I could take those lessons and apply them to somebody who's walking through what I walked through. And I've seen it a lot, especially lately. I have been having multiple people reach out to me and go, hey, I remember watching a lot of your journey and I know somebody who's going through the same thing. Can you help them? And I want to keep doing that. But the specific thing that I've, a couple people reach out to me is about their babies and the two specific couples have sent me pictures of their baby and I'm sitting there going, oh, wow, this is like deja vu, slight PTSD, like bringing it back to everything that we went through when Sage was really struggling, which he does still have days that are hard, but I believe he is healed. I believe he has been covered in prayer. And so uh, let's just get into like the order of events. So... Um, I was done having children because I had a miscarriage and then I had a traumatic birth with my daughter at six months pregnant. She was in the NICU. All that to say, I was like, I'm done having kids. And then I heard God say, soften your heart to have another child. And I was still kind of like, eh. Well, then we got COVID. And this was when COVID was like, you know, a lot more unknown. And, and they said that you needed to quarantine for 14 days, two weeks. Well, by the end of that second week, we were well, but we were still required to stay home. Well, there's only so many shows you can binge and movies you can watch and games you can play. There really wasn't much else to do. Long story short, when a man and a woman, <laughs> surprise baby. So I'm, I'm obviously skipping a couple of details, but what happened was my, my husband and myself both had COVID. We technically were still COVID positive and we conceived a baby. And so that, that I'll stop there with that. So then I was upset. I wasn't actually ready to be pregnant, even though I, I felt like God was saying like, Hey, you might want to consider having another child, which I was considering adoption or fostering. I wasn't, I hated pregnancy. And so when I found out I was pregnant, I mean, I was not happy. Um, that reminds me, I need to talk about that. Um, I was not happy with being pregnant and then I was starting to accept it and I started convincing myself, well, like you've done this before, you can do it again. You have, you've done the girl thing. Maybe you, maybe you're pregnant with a girl. Well, then we got the blood work back and they called me to tell me it was a boy and I was just not happy. And so I had a lot of negative emotions during that pregnancy. While that pregnancy was very healthy and his birth was very redemptive. His, his birthday was just beautiful. I'll never forget that moment. Um, just, it was wonderful. It was a great, great birth. And we did not, we tried to do things a little bit differently. We didn't do all of the vaccinations because I, I was still researching a lot of them. And then 
when he was two months old, he was diagnosed with atopic dermatitis, which is eczema. And his pediatrician at the time said, I would not recommend getting him vaccinated while he's still struggling. Well, he struggled for two years, so we never vaccinated him. Um, but that's its own, like I'm not making a statement about vaccines. I just, just so you guys know where he's at in that journey. So we, when he's two months old, we're dealing with this eczema thing and, and it starts to kind of go away. It's it a little bit better by using a couple of the creams and just paying attention to his skin. Well, then a year after his conception date, so it was January of 2021, he, I'm sorry, no, because he was born in 2021. We conceived him in January of 2021. In January of 2022, he got COVID. So we all got COVID again a year later. Isn't that ironic? Well, he started getting this really bad rash head to toe and we didn't think that it looked like what he had a month previous when he was two months old. So we take him to the ER because we don't know much about COVID. And so we're in the ER. Of course, the doctor won't even come into the room because she's just terrified of COVID. And she looks at us from the doorway and looks and says, you brought him to the ER just because he has eczema? And I swear, I looked over at Seth and I was like, hold me back. Mama bear is not okay with that belittling. Regardless, we didn't know it was eczema and we didn't know anything about it. So she sends us home with um, Aquaphor. And then we start and he gets worse. I mean, he gets where his like skin swells up. He starts getting these infections and the one infection. So this goes on for a year from January to December, Christmas of 2022. We spend a week at Cook's ER because he has such a severe staph infection. I mean, he is, I don't even want to show you guys pictures. It was traumatic. He was covered head to toe in these like scales and they were like, had pus and it was, it was terrible. And he had a severe staph infection, which if staph gets into the blood, it's very serious. And there was multiple times throughout that year where I'd walk into his room and he'd be covered in blood. Like I'll never forget the time I walked in and his crib was just covered and it's cause he was scratching. And so we tried a couple of things. We tried all these different creams and formulas. I had one lady who was like, oh, my daughter had the same thing. And we switched her to soy formula and she healed. And I was like, okay, let's do that. So we put him on soy formula. He gets worse. Another lady that used to live down the road was like, oh, my son had that. We did oat baths. That fixed him. So I start doing oat baths. He gets worse. Someone eventually mentions allergy testing. So we find out he's severely allergic to soy and oats. And then I'm all, all while this whole year, I'm getting constant messages from people who care and who want to help. But they're like, we did this one thing and our kid got better. And so I'm like holding on to that and believing like, that's what's going to heal my son. And no, not, nothing I did worked. I was like, I've tried everything. I'm desperate. Like I've done everything. I don't know what else I can do to heal him. And he just wasn't getting better. And I'll never forget. I was sitting in the driveway, just sobbing like, why won't you heal my son? I'm so mad at God because I, I believe we serve a God that's healing. He had healed my mind. Why couldn't he heal my son's body? And I heard God say, I will heal Sage in my time. And I'm like, God, why can't you just heal him now? You're that powerful. And it goes back to what I was talking about with my story about the so that. We don't go through hard things so that we can get good things. But maybe we go through hard things so that we can help someone else going through a hard thing at a later time. And that's why I'm making this video is because there are too many people suffering and watching their babies suffer. And so I want to give somebody clarity. And if this just helps one person, I'm happy. It would be great if I could find other people that are going through what me and my husband went through where we were miserable. Y'all, it was so bad. I was so anxious all the time about not being able to heal my son that I was using certain substances to make myself feel better. And I was just so anxious that I, I wasn't serving my family in the way that God's called me to. And so I just want to tell you right now, I want to encourage you right now, if you are a mama who is anxious because you're watching your child suffer, please have peace and know that he tells us in his word that there is peace for us and that he is a God of healing. And I used to get so annoyed when people, my Christian friends would be like, if you just believe he'll be healed. And I was like, 
I'm sorry, but screw you. You have no idea what I'm going through. And so it's kind of ironic if I'm for me to sit here and be like, just have faith because they will be healed because I know it feels annoying, but I'm telling you, I'm on the other side of it. And I watched that healing happen. I wanted a miracle. I wanted instantaneous healing. I prayed for that. And that's not, that's not how God works every time. Sometimes it's a slow progression of healing. And I'm glad that that's how God healed my son because it allowed me to learn things along the way. So let's get back to tangible steps. One of the things that a dermatologist recommended was bleach baths. And I, if you know me, I'm pretty hippie. I'm pretty crunchy, holistic, whatever. Bleach is not something we even keep in our house, but we do keep in our house is this Kangen water machine, which I worked at a wellness center before I had my Kangen water machine. And I learned about this water called 2.5 strong acidic water, and it works like bleach without the chemicals. And so when Sage was really struggling with his staph infections, we, instead of doing a bleach bath, we filled a bathtub with regular water, with filtered faucet water from the bathtub, warm. And then we took a, like a cup of 2.5 water from this condom water machine where I worked. We poured it in the bath. We put Sage in the bath. I don't know how long he was in there. Maybe 10 minutes. We take him out and the puffiness from his skin was gone. A lot of the redness was gone. A lot of the yellowy, like infection-y look, looking things was gone. And that's when my husband was like, go get the machine. And so I purchased the machine. And now it's something that we use in our house every day. Like we all drink the Kangen water, which it has a bunch of levels of water. That's its own rabbit hole. I don't want to overwhelm anyone. Like one of my biggest goals with this video is to simplify the steps needed to get your child to where they're, they're functioning on a, on, in a place where you can function as a mom. And then you can get a doctor to say X, Y, Z, which some doctors are not going to agree with me. And that's fine. Like I said, I'm not a doctor. I'm just sharing what worked for my son. So the Kangen water machine was pivotal for us because it had 2.5 water. We also switched all of his drinking water to the Kangen water, which was 9.5. So that was something else that worked. And then another thing that may sound a little woo woo, but something that I feel like did help was I worked with a somatic therapist and we talked through some of my traumas and I really processed the anger that I was feeling when I was pregnant with him. And then I started speaking love and life into him. So I'd put him in his crib at night. I'd sit in the rocking chair and I'd pray over him and I'd say things like, I love you. And I am so happy you're in my life. And it's almost like a reversal of some of the feelings I was having when I was pregnant with him. So I believe there's power in prayer. I believe there's power in faith. I think I also doubted if God would truly heal. So when I switched my mindset to believing that we do serve a God that wants to heal, it helped. Um, and I started relying on God instead of me. So when I was in the thick of it, I was like desperate. And maybe this is you. I was like searching out everything. I mean, I was putting him in my sauna with me. I was doing these, like all these baths. I was buying all these creams. And I was like, I'm going to heal him. Dang it. You know, like being stubborn and that's not what God calls us to be. He calls us to surrender and to trust. So when I got to a place where I was calm enough and quiet enough, I could let the Lord lead me to my next steps. And I truly believe because I did that, Sage received healing. Because God moved and I allowed him to move and I was quiet enough to hear what he had to say, I believe that's how Sage got his healing. Sage has also been diagnosed with another disorder called ezioenphilic esophagitis. I'm, I believe I said that right, but for short, it's EOE. Um, he was diagnosed with severe allergies. He's allergic to a ton of stuff. Uh, he's diagnosed with eczema, and then there's a potential asthma that they won't diagnose him with, but he's struggled with breathing. So all of those diagnoses that have given us answers, and now we know some things that work. So what I want to do is run down a bullet point list of the things that we did that I believe have healed him. Grab your pen and paper. First thing is prayer, faith. Um, if you don't believe in God or the power of the Holy Spirit, which th that's a game changer in itself. The Holy Spirit is our helper. Um, if you don't believe in that stuff, speaking life and love over your child and, and that belief of I know they will be healed. I trust they will be healed. That is going to be your starting point. So that's number one. Number two is to keep their hands covered. So there's a couple products you can purchase for this. Uh, one is called the eczema suit. It's made out of bamboo. 
It's great for doing things like wet wraps. If you're at a place where you're doing wet wraps, if you don't know what that is, you can look that up. That's what Sage did when he was in the hospital with a staph infection. So we also have taken pants and shirts to the tailor and had gloves and socks sewn in. Um, Cause when he was able to be mobile, he would just scratch at his legs. So we just keep his legs covered. And when we did that, when we kept him covered, he wasn't getting open wounds, which means he wasn't getting staph infections. But if your child is still suffering with staph infections, you need to get help. You need to get those staph infections to stop because that's serious. That's where you're gonna go see a doctor. The doctors can prescribe things. We were prescribed Muprosin, which is very helpful for the staph infections. But when we were trying to prevent staph infections, this is gonna be step number three. So one was prayer, faith, belief, whatever you wanna call it. Number two was keeping the hands covered. Number three is gonna be the 2.5 water, which will clean the wounds. You can do um, like a sponge bath with the 2.5 water. It's called strong acidic water. And it, the only way you can get it is from this conga machine. And if you're like, I can't invest in the conga machine, then find a wellness center near you where you can either get the water for free or you can purchase the water. Um, the company does have really, really good in-house financing. And if you wanna talk about getting a machine, um, I can definitely help you with that. That's something that, I think was one of the biggest things for Sage and Sage's healing was the water machine. And I think it helps me a lot too. It helps my husband. It helps my daughter. I truly believe in that machine. I, I wouldn't offer to sell it to anybody if I didn't believe in it. Um, and I don't want anyone to be like, I'm desperate. Take my money. That's not what this is. This is to encourage and give hope. So 2.5 water, my opinion is to do that instead of the bleach baths. But if you do bleach baths, that's you know, just pray about it before you do anything. Pray about all these steps that I'm giving you. All right, let's go back. We've got prayer faith. We've got keeping hands covered, using the eczema suit or the gloves. We've got the 2.5 water. And then next would be your products, your soaps, your creams, your lotions. Keep it simple. Anything you use that you're putting on their skin, you want it to be in a pump. Like the lotions, the creams, you want to pump those. You don't want anything that you're dipping your hands into because we have a lot of bacteria under the fingernails. Bacteria is how infections are spread. So keep that very, uh, don't, don't be dipping into anything. Do a pump. I really, really like Vanna cream. We get that in bulk on Amazon. I've also seen it at Kroger. Vanna cream is simple. Uh, try not to get overwhelmed with all the creams. Everyone's like, oh, I had this one cream and I'm sure that one cream worked for someone. Like I've heard great things from Tubby Todd and Melaleuca and Young Living and all these things. But one thing that we learned is fragrance, essential oils, as much as I love those. I got my diffuser going over here. Stay away from anything with fragrance. Um, they can be very allergic to it. It can cause all kinds of issues. So nothing with fragrance, nothing with added like parabens or things like that. So keep your cream and lotion and all that stuff simple. A lot of dermatologists will do different prescriptions for topical steroids. There's a lot of controversy on that, but bottom line with this bullet point is don't dip your hands in cream. Use a pump if you can. Um, next step, get your child tested for their allergens. There's a ton of great allergists out there and there's different philosophies on this as well. So we did allergy testing for a while. I think that got him a lot of help and I love our allergist, but we just recently switched to a new allergist who is talking long-term because Sage is out of the woods with a lot of the scary infections and all that. We can talk about long-term stuff, which there's a lot of theories around allergies about if you avoid something for so long, then you're likely to be allergic for the rest of your life. Sage is severely allergic to nuts. Nut allergies are very tricky. So uh, we do have EpiPens, go through all that, but get your child allergy tested. If you uh, are, if your child is consuming something that they're allergic to, or if you're breastfeeding and you're eating a bunch of what they're allergic to, they're never gonna get well. Um, and that can kind of segue into gut health. There's a lot of controversy around gut health. There's a lot of things with, did you take antibiotics when you were pregnant? If so, your baby's gut is probably aff affected by that. Did you have a C-section? If so, your baby's gut is affected by that, which we had a C-section. It was wonderful. I wouldn't change it for the world. I loved my C-section. But there's a chance that because I had a C-section, his gut bacteria isn't what it would be if we had a vaginal birth. So keep that in mind. You can't live with regret. That's something that I learned when I was doing somatic therapy. You can't regret the choices you made. All you can do is move forward. So gut health, allergy testing. And then the last thing I want to say is do not put food products on their skin. This goes back to the pump. When you're putting anything that's a food, even breast milk. I did breast milk baths with him. 
Don't recommend that. Um, when you're putting food on their skin, you are then opening up them up to potential infections. Food grows mold. And if you're putting mold products on their body and you don't know about it, it could be making them worse. So quick rundown, prayer and faith, keep their hands covered, get the staph infection under control, talk to somebody about bleach bath or 2.5 water, talk to me about a Congo water machine. Simple soaps, pump with the cream, don't put your hand in it, don't use food products, get them allergy tested, look at their gut health. Simple, don't complicate it. Don't spend a ton of money thinking that it's gonna solve your child's problems and your problems. If you're like me and your child's health is affecting your mental health, stop and take a breath. We should have meditated before this video. Just take a breath. It's going to be okay. And I'm gonna tell you two words. It's only for now. So for now are those two words that I want you to hold on to. This is not forever. I promise you that. No child is gonna struggle and suffer for the rest of their life. This is just for now, okay? I'm gonna pray um, that, that you will receive the healing that's needed. Holy Spirit, we ask for your power right now. Whoever is watching this video is watching this because they are probably in a place of desperation. And I just ask that you would comfort them that you would wrap your arms around them so that they feel safe and loved and seen and heard and they know that they matter. Would you just reach out and bring your favor upon this mama or this daddy or whoever is watching this video that you would bring your blessings into their life and that you would heal their child. But mainly, would you comfort them in knowing that it will be okay, that it is temporary, it is just for now. We believe that you are a God of healing, that you are Jehovah Rapha, and we lean into that right now. We ask all of these things, we believe these things, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have peace and blessings.